Well, hello and welcome to the Laird All Medical IMSH 2021 Remote Learning Solutions webinar. We are live from our Canadian headquarters in Toronto, Canada. I'm one of your hosts, Dave Grant. Hi, everybody, and I'm your other host, Bruce Karatsoglu, and thank you for joining us today. Bruce, the one thing that I always enjoy about IMSH is that we get to go some fun place that typically we've never been before. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, participating in the first ever virtual IMSH conference is for sure a place we've never been before. And I guess that really is what this past year has been about for a lot of us is a place yeah. we've never been before. Yeah. That's right, Dave. I mean, we've all had to pivot to adjust to the current situation and really still get things done. Bruce. I know we've titled this presentation Remote Learning Solutions, but I have to say I'm a little hung up on that word remote. Well, Davey, the hair learning solutions meant to help educators meet their objectives remotely, so the word kind of fits, right? <laughs> Fair enough, you're right, and I do agree, but I think something is getting lost without us taking the time to explain a few things first. Absolutely, I think I know where you're going with this, Davey, but why don't you go ahead and explain? Well, when the initial wave of this pandemic hit and everything stopped, educators were literally scrambling. Most clinical rotations and in-person activities were canceled and people were looking for any way possible to meet their objectives remotely. Exactly, and the big problem was that most remote platforms that were available like Zoom or Teams simply didn't have the required functionality and left many learning objectives unachievable, especially things like in-hospital clinical rotations and lab-based skill sessions. Yeah, and so for me that word remote kind of implies this distant, isolated departure from the ideal. And the solutions we're presenting today are anything but a departure from the ideal. Right. We decided at Lairdall early on that even though the tools and the methods have changed, the quality of the outcomes shouldn't be compromised at all. Okay, so you're saying the mission is still the same, the pathway to get there is what's changed. You got it. You know, just because you are not teaching the way you used to, doesn't mean that you shouldn't still have control over your curriculum. You mm -hmm. should still be able to schedule and assign classes and events. You should still be able to communicate your objectives and expectations with your learners and track their progress. Um, you should still be able to provide feedback and remediation where it's needed. So I guess, Dave, what you're saying is that we wanted to help achieve, wanted people to achieve what they were always achieving all along. But except doing it remotely now. Yeah, and I think right. there's another piece to it that's important. Even though people are being forced to pivot in this way, we wanted the solutions we bring forward now to be things that will add value and have a valid place in their programs in the future so that the adjustments we're forced to make now aren't just a harbor and a storm mm. to get mm -hmm. us through our current situation, but through this digital acceleration, we are providing solutions to meet needs that have existed in programs long before the pandemic and will help grow and improve outcomes for years to come. It's a great point, Dave. I mean, who hasn't struggled with lack of physical space or clinical spots, not to mention capacity challenges and access to simulators and medical devices like cardiac monitors or ventilators for training? You know, I really think, Bruce, much of how we were doing things is going to come back. Mm -hmm. We were doing it well. Mm -hmm. But the solutions that we're gonna show people today are not only going to help people during the restrictions of this pandemic, they're gonna strengthen areas of need and fill gaps that have always existed right. until now. So why don't you tell them what we're gonna talk about today, Bruce? I would love to. Everybody, during this 30-minute session, we will explore four tools to help you function within a virtual environment. We'll illustrate the use of a low-cost multi-skills trainer in combination with a peer-to-peer -peer facilitation method. Number two, we'll demonstrate the use of an online, adaptive, and interactive virtual simulation platform specializing in clinical replacements for nursing students. Thirdly, we'll take a look at an innovative and cost-effective platform for remote ventilation management and training. And finally, throughout the entire presentation, we will show you how Sim Capture can help you tie all this together, automating, tracking, and reporting on every aspect of your simulation center's activity, in person and remotely. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, so why don't we begin by acknowledging that clearly there are challenges in delivering simulation-based education these days. Physical distance restrictions, lack of clinical placement opportunities, lack of scalability, lack of easily available outcome data, 
to address these challenges, we'd like to introduce you to a methodology that combines the accessibility of a low-cost, multi-skills trainer with a technique known as peer-to-peer -peer or student-to-student -student training. So Bruce, uh, in its simplest form, peer-to-peer -peer learning should be understood as an education method where students are learning from each other in a collaborative and safe learning environment, just what we all want, right? Right. <laughs> Please note that the student can be either the one who's receiving the feedback or giving the feedback. So we both get a chance to play the different roles. Mm -hmm. Controlled, deliberate practice that can be monitored is the goal. Imagine if you had a tool where you had the ability to schedule, assign, and monitor these peer-driven learner events. Mm -hmm. Further to that, imagine if you had the ability to create a curriculum-driven checklist to assist and direct the student facilitator in a consistent and controlled manner. Right. A set of notes to basically have them behave the way you would if you, the instructor, was there. Sure. Imagine if this tool also had the ability to marry together the electronic record of those sessions, talked about checkboxes, mm -hmm. with the student recorded video that could be uploaded to the cloud, available for all instructors to evaluate and grade, and there is a permanent record. Just as though you, the faculty member, were there, present for each one of those individual learning sessions. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So now imagine if this system is the same system that once we were all back where we want to be, in person in our simulation labs, and that that system can provide management and automation to every aspect of your in-person simulation center operations. Mm -hmm. SimCapture really is the leading solution for simulation center management, and now the exact same can be said for any remote simulation activities and data management. So we're going to give you a little more on that in a minute. So, just before we dive into what these remote peer-to-peer -peer sessions look like, let me just mention how peer-to-peer -peer can improve the quality of your peer-directed skill sessions when you're in person. So let's set the scene here. We're just going to show, we're going to cut cameras here and show. Um, Alyssa is in our uh, uh, Toronto Simulation Lab, which is a studio now, but she's with our nursing and geriatric simulator. So we want you to picture this is one of your students in your existing lab. This peer-directed practice could happen using a mannequin. So the mannequin here in Nursing and Simulator, our geriatric version, um, we're going to be doing an injection thing. So Alyssa's just going to kind of take a look at the deltoid area and just the great assessments that you'd be able to get. And so this kind of brings life to the activity on the mannequin and really increases utilization when an instructor's not there, but still this great way to sort of valid, uh, in a valid way, control the steps the students are taking. Mm -hmm. So. I think we all got to acknowledge, though, that most faculty aren't going to be comfortable sending these mannequins home with the students. Can't do it. So let's talk about um, uh, what is replacing the mannequin in this case. OK, great. Thanks, Dave. That was a great introduction to Nursing Ann Simulator with the geriatric kit. The modular skills trainer, however, is a little bit different. It's a low-cost, portable solution for skill practice and competency development. Optimized for distance learning, the trainer is a practical solution to help students gain confidence through repetitive, independent practice. The trainer includes realistic, interchangeable accessories, giving the student an opportunity to practice wound care, tracheostomy management, ostomy, nasogastric, and G-tube care as well. On top of that, oxygen therapy. There are ears there as well, IV insertion, central line dressing exercises, Foley and enema procedure, and especially nasal swab and IM injections, which are particularly relevant in today's day and age. So, now let's talk about the workflow of combining the Sim Capture peer to peer methodology with the use of the Skills Trainer. Great. So, I'm going to just kind of switch places with Alyssa here. And um, so, the way this method would work, the idea is we're, we're dealing with our restrictions, so, we're, so I, likely we're off site. But let's face it, this could be, I think you're going to see, this could be in the school cafeteria. This could be in a regular uh, traditional classroom. This could be in someone's dorm room. This could be at home on the kitchen table. So I, as the, uh, Alyssa and I are going to be the two nursing students here. Alyssa is going to be the, the, the practitioner role, the actual student role. And I'm going to be the student facilitator role. If you're seeing my screen now, you'll realize that we're sort of emulating what my iPad would look like. In this case, I have an iPad as a student, and I would log on to the SIM capture cloud application and you can see all of the skills that I have um, put here for me to practice are available to me. So in this case we're going to do this intermuscular injection. So the idea is, I mentioned before, that the idea is giving you as a faculty the confidence that I'm going to run the session, 
about as good for Alyssa as if you, the faculty member, were here. I can read off an overview and learning objectives. This is a test environment, so we don't have it all there. You're seeing blanks. And then when we're ready to practice, here's a real key part. This is how you know that Alyssa and I are doing this today. I'm going to put Alyssa's name in as the learner, and I'm going to put my name in as the facilitator. We can choose from a drop-down menu. And then when I hit next, we're ready to begin. So this starts like any session. It's a great time to do some pre-reflection testing. You control all of this again. So in this case, we've got a couple pre-reflection questions on intramuscular injections and vaccine administration. Now, I am going to just save us some time here, and I'm just going to click them. I'm probably clicking the wrong answers. I apologize. And once we've done that pre-quiz, we're going to be debriefed later. So we'll find out if we got those right. So here we are. So here is into that checklist. So you will see there's a list of steps here and an, and an answer to my response. So we're hoping, obviously, that Alyssa would introduce herself to the patient and let, her, let the patient know what they do. And so I'll either click performed, not performed, or maybe some things I might have to prompt her. As we move along, we're just going to check all these things that Alyssa does. And she may get some of these things in a bit of a different order. And if I, if I miss one and then realize she got it, I can always kind of scroll back. But the idea is to start ticking off. She's checking if it has allergies. She's going to start choosing an injection site here, getting the patient sitting comfortable, and so on. Now, your process may differ a bit like this, so wash your hands. So we're hoping she's going to wash her hands. We've got some hand sanitizer for her there. Gathering the correct equipment. Um, if this was the objective of your case, you would have four or five points here about the exact piece of equipment. It's whatever your objectives are in this to get a good deliberate practice and what you want to measure. So as we go on, so there's things for donning her PPE. And you'll notice that all of these have to be completed, either uh, performed, not performed, um, or that I had to prompt her. So I'm going to go through them all. So she's cleaning the site now and actually doing her um, non-dominant hand to hold the muscle and the whole bit. So we obviously are not experts in performing these skills, but we can help you program the methodology that you want into yours. So here, so after she's done her procedure, and I am satisfied that I have covered all the things, we are going to close out of this and go to our debrief. So that took a little while. I had to click all of those. Excuse me. And now we're on to just a post-reflection phase. So in this case, we've just put one question in here to talk about um, the vaccine, and she's going to give me an answer, and I'm going to submit that. So here's where we go to the evaluation piece. So this is like you were the instructor in the room and you had been taking notes and you're now gonna tell Alyssa where, what her areas for improvement are. So here's those pre-activity questions we did, which ones we got right, which ones we, I, we didn't do, I guess I didn't check one, and uh, what ones you got wrong. Um, we can go along to the um, actual skills. So every single step that we did, and if any, I got any of these wrong, I was really good to us, I, I clicked them, a lot of them right but then we can click here and see the ones that we actually got wrong. And so this is an opportunity just to brief. So Melissa, you know, you forgot to gain consent to proceed with the actual injection. So that's a good thing to remember next time. So after we've done that, we now go on and our scoring system that you can customize gives you an overall score here. And you can set a, a threshold for where you want your students to be. But the idea here is that I give Alyssa a good thorough debriefing exactly the way you would give her if you, if, as a faculty member you were here. And then we do it again, practice, to perfection. That's great, Dave. Thank you. So, and Alyssa, thank you very much. So, Dave, you mentioned that we could incorporate video from the instructor view and evaluate the student's performance that way? Yeah, Bruce. So, I, I think this is an important part of the workflow. So, you've kind of seen the data you'll have, and you can see you can have the comfort that I was able to facilitate the session in a consistent way that you wanted. So, when the student feels ready, he or she then takes their own personal cell phone and captures a video of them completing the procedure. That's cool. So this I am not going to be very good at, but I would find a place to stand that. my phone up or, or yeah. get my uh, coworker here that. <laughs> to hold it for me. I would go ahead and just complete the procedure completely unscripted with no one prompting me at all. Then when I'm done, I just upload through the Sim Capture mobile student app. I'll, I'm going to upload this video to the cloud and it is instantly available for my faculty members to um, view and use for grading and, and tracking and reporting. That's a fantastic methodology, Dave. So we're, we're basically combining um, two methodologies, methodologies uh, utilizing a task trainer for skills um, competency development, and then also the automation of the Sim, Sim Capture peer-to-peer -peer, um, platform. That's great. That's right. So if this interests you in any way at all, if you're interested in peer-to-peer -peer learning, 
Um, go to our website, LairdAll.com, and there is a lot more information. There's a dedicated page to Peer to Peer. And even better, get in touch with your Laird All representative. Um, we'd love to come and talk to you. If you don't know who they are, get in touch with our customer service department, and we'll get you talking to them that day. Amazing, thank you. Okay, so we are at this point in the presentation transitioning, but let me summarize. It's proven that peer learning activities can yield many positive results, including higher student engagement and confidence, and act as a means to even boost capacity. In addition, limited availability of faculty and staff is one of the main reasons training equipment is underutilized. Allowing students access to this equipment on their own time to perform peer-to-peer um, -peer skills development training in a way that is both standardized and curriculum driven empowers your students to learn in a new and innovative way. And innovation continues to be the theme of the day here as we transition to another virtual solution known as vSIM. Great, so I love talking about vSIM. So vSIM is designed to simulate real nursing scenarios. Um, we co-developed it, um, Lairdall Medical and Walters Kluwer co-developed this. And what it does is it allows students to interact with virtual patients in a safe and realistic online environment. Mm -hmm. So these are adaptive, interactive virtual simulations with integrated curriculum resources for you as faculty to sort of map them out and personalized feedback given to every student after every case. Um, they provide a full simulation learning experience for every student to promote confidence and competence right. in patient-centered care. So let's just go back and reflect on mid-March of 2020 as the COVID-19 crisis unfolded. The impact on nursing education was one of the first areas that came to our attention where we had a real opportunity to help. Yeah. So I think we're gonna share um, Alyssa's screen here. She's just gonna browse along a little bit on, on our webpage about uh, VSIM. But in response to the growing number of institutions canceling classes and clinical placements, um, and moving all learning online, Lairdall began conducting live webinars to sort of show how vSIM, this great product that we've had, um, can offer an online on-demand environment to continue to support these students' clinical preparedness despite the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, vSIM is actually comprised of nine individual modules. You should see them on your screen there, but we have uh, among them are nursing fundamentals, med surge, there's a mental health, gerontology, maternal pediatrics. <clears throat> Each module now, and I think we're going to divide into a different, we're going to um, head into a different web page here. Right. You're going to be looking at the portal you would see when you log in as a student. So from any, any device at all, um, Alyssa as a student logs in and she's going to see the modules that have been assigned to her by her faculty. Mm -hmm. Each module now is made up of 10 interactive virtual simulations or patient cases. Um, these include integrated curriculum resources and of course that personalized feedback for everything the student does. Useful curriculum mapping tools allow faculty to confidently use vSIM um, uh, and a valid clinical aug augmentation, and if needed, a clinical replacement resource. Right, right. So it lets you actually look what's covered in each of these cases and map that out to what your in-person clinical objectives were. That's right. So we're gonna go over here, and uh, you're seeing Alyssa's screen now. And so she is actually in a case. So we are in the fundamentals module and we're, we're on a case with Mona Hernandez. Um, what this does is it gives us a suggested reading. So this is where in the textbook Alyssa can go to um, do some pre-reading so she's ready to take on this case. Um, in this case the Walters Kluwer textbook, uh, fundamentals textbook is referenced, but Alyssa could go to whatever fundamentals textbook she um, uses in her program and do this subject of pre-reading. So the next thing, let's make sure that she's really ready. So there's a pre-simulation quiz here where we have a series of questions. In this case, there's seven of them, um, just so we can really see, is Alyssa really kind of dialed in and ready to take on this patient or does she need a little more review? So she's gonna answer here. She's gonna get immediate feedback and immediate sort of curriculum support in terms of more knowledge resources to reference if she got anything wrong. When she's ready though, we're gonna now dive into the actual simulation theater. So we're, we're virtually walking into your virtual sim lab now. So in this case, we get an open screen here and we see that Mona Hernandez is our patient. And what she's reading now is just a briefing on the patient. I kind of like to think of this as a, just a real good thorough report that you would get from a colleague as you take over care. Uh, when she's ready, she says, okay, take me to go see this patient. The first thing we walk into here is our electronic health record. Just like any good nurse, she's gonna check the chart and make sure she knows who she's gonna see. So Alyssa's gonna just check what's happened here. 
um, any notes that have been made, any procedures that have been done, any medications that have been given, um, and most importantly in our case, kind of any orders that the physician has given. So Alyssa is going to get those, and she is now going to go see the patient. So she's going to treat this like a Hi, real inpatient interaction, I'll including be things like washing her hands, letting her know who she is and why she's here. Hi, um, you can see these tabs Amy. down the side that Alyssa is clicking on. Nice these are sort you. of categories of either questions and or assessments that Alyssa can perform and have her nursing yes, avatar there um, perform them in this virtual environment for. This can include history taking, it can include assessments, I things like oscillating lungs, lungs and bowel sounds. Um, we can take all our vital signs and ECG, we can order labs, okay. anything that was kind of given in that physician report we're going to carry on. But when Alyssa has done, and this is a real important part, when Alyssa independently here has decided she's got enough information to act on the physician's orders, she carries them out. And then she hands off care of the patient sounds when she's at done. the right lung base. So after this handoff occurs, this is when we're going to get a full grading of everything we did. Now I really rushed her here, so she was just clicking away to show you guys, but we didn't do very good here, 7%. But we know exactly where we need to improve, because everywhere you see a red X is something we've got to read. Uh, you can see they are prioritized in things that are critical, critical errors that would cause harm to a patient, um, and then it sort of scales down from there. But the point being is that Alyssa can read through this and know exactly why she only got 7%. And when she's ready, she's going to hit continue and try again. Like we said before, practice to perfection. When we get out, we got a chance to take a post-simulation quiz. Now this would be something that the student would likely take when they were finished and they were happy with their scenario outcome, but there's a post-simulation quiz. Like the pre-simulation quiz, this, it gives us feedback and gives us remediation on our answers. And then anything else that you've assigned in terms of documentation assignments, and these could be the things that you normally do where, where, they're, um, uh, where students are filling out charts in the Word documents or however you do it normally, you can incorporate your, your normal workflow in here, your post-clinical rotation workflow. Um, and then there are some guided reflection questions, and this is completely customizable by you. You decide what you want this to look like, and so you get this feedback from the students electronically about what their personal reflections are about the event. Wow, that was amazing. So to reiterate what's already been mentioned here, the use of this platform can also provide robust data, including, but certainly not limited to, a record of completion and performance, it can help us identify areas of focus for improvement. It provides an equal and equitable opportunity to participate in reliable and reproducible simulation events, regardless of location and cohort size. So you know, Bruce, I gotta say, um, as a father of a recent nursing grad, oh, yeah. it makes me really proud to have had such a valid and timely solution to offer the nursing education community during the time of crisis we all experienced this past year. Yeah, no doubt. That is a great example to provide some context for how um, important these remote learning solutions are, Dave. When I look at the demands uh, this past year has had on healthcare staff who specialize specifically in respiratory care, I can't help but think of how difficult it would be to learn the required competencies in the area of uh, ventilator management. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, incredibly pertinent to the time with, the, with this respiratory crisis we've been in. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine there's a huge need for instructor-facilitated, hands-on, one-on-one -on -one instruction for something as complicated as even just the basic function and operation of our modern ventilators. Yeah, you, you absolutely nailed it there, Dave. And, and there's a lot more to it than, than just that fundamental principle of ventilating somebody. There's the recognition and interpretation of the various waveforms and then combining that into the care and management of a ventilated patient with a complex disease process going on like ARDS that we commonly see with COVID patients. This is a skill that needs to be taught and then practiced repeatedly until perfected. Well that's great. Well Bruce you know that uh, I used to work as a paramedic. Mm -hmm. And so my experience with ventilator was very minimal. We used a bag valve mask, a silicone resuscitator to yeah. the end of the ET tube. So yeah. why don't you walk me through how this TrueVent works? And I think I can probably learn something here today. Yeah, and you know what? I, I used to be an RT as well, and I was an RT student. And having a tool like this to help make the transition from theory to practice certainly um, would have been helpful to me. So this is called True Monitor. True Monitor is an application that can live on either an iOS device or an Android device. Me and Dave here today are using um, iOS devices. I'm going to act as the instructor. You can see my screen and I'll access that now. Now, 
Dave and I are obviously in the same room, but we don't have to be to be able to communicate on this platform. What I can do is go to the remote function and then I can give Dave either electronically, but in this case, I'm gonna give it to him verbally. Our session code is 722-959, Dave. 722-959. 9. Okay, and I joined. I have a chance to put my name in here, so you know it's me. Awesome. So I understand that the rest of my class could be joining too. We could have we could have a number of us all in their own homes, yeah, on their own devices, connected to the internet, joining your class. Yeah, the power of networking with this tool is really quite vast. Um, I can communicate with Dave one on one, and this could be just for one on one remote instruction, or it can be remediation on something that Dave's identified he might need a little bit more work in, yeah. or I can invite the entire class to this session where I can demonstrate to them. Um, how I can change the lung models on any given patient and I can select one student to be responsible for responding to those changes. So there's a lot of, a lot of power in this. So what I'm going to do is just have a look at Dave. Dave is under my profile here. I can see that I'm connected to him and I'm going to assign him a ventilator control so that he can take control and kind of bob and weave with the changes that I make in the physiology of this patient. All right. So, so okay, now, so uh, this, the screen I'm seeing now, this looks familiar to me. This looks like the screen of a ventilator. Um, I don't know a lot about these waveforms, yeah. but I see it looks like everything you would see on a, a pressures and FiO2, tidal volume, all the things you would see on a ventilator. Yeah, you can see the sweep is going from left to right and you can see that those scalars are developing and changing as this patient is ventilating. Now this is a healthy adult patient. I want to point out a couple of things that I can do as the instructor here. Um, the patient details I can change from male to female and I can even select a pediatric patient. So lots of different demographics that we can re represent here. And then let's look at airway resistance. There's also airway resistance, there's compliance, um, there's a whole host of different variables that we can manipulate. But in this case, I'm just going to look to airway resistance and demonstrate to you that as I crank up the inspiratory airway resistance. So I'm going to see changes here. Yeah, and so I'm making the changes now, but I obviously have to update okay. the system to have those changes engage. And now we'll see a difference in the scalars that our student, in this case, oh, Dave, can see. Yeah. And so I, I see I can turn my microphone on, so we could be talking. So even if I was at home, you and I could engage, you could ask me questions, I could ask you questions. Lots of different ways to engage um, as, as far as communication goes. We can be speaking one-on-one. -on -one. I, I could ask uh, Dave to share his screen with me so that I can see exactly what he's seeing and how he's making changes based on the, uh, the manipulations that I'm making to, the, to this virtual patient. So a lot, of, a lot of power, it seems like a very simple tool, but the impact goes far beyond um, just the application. That you yeah, see and so I also understand um, there's quite a powerful tool for creating scenarios ahead of time. So yeah. if we want something that we can just consistently deliver over and over again, um, whatever the objectives are, mm -hmm. you can just sort of run this pre-configured scenario mm -hmm. and, um, and, and scale that up to run for a number of different occasions consistently. It's, so it's, exciting, it's exciting stuff. There are things you can see the complications here on the instructor screen, um, including but not limited to things like tension pneumothorax, thorax, uh, massive PE, um, air emboli, et cetera. And then of course we can go and we can create our own to, to create some very bespoke um, kind of yeah. uh, lung conditions. So All right. yeah, there you go. Well, that's amazing. You know, Bruce, it really is amazing. And um, although I still don't think I know what I'm doing personally, <laughs> that felt like you and I were really in a room together yeah. and we were making adjustments on the ventilator and you were showing me what everything does. Um, Really incredible. Everything I would need to know to operate it safely and, yeah. and training remotely. That's right, Dave. Exactly. And then you add the fact that TrueVent is capable of managing all ages and sizes, as I mentioned, of patient populations, plus the ability to program the complex presentations of your patients you'd like ahead of time. It makes it a real solid solution for our customers that are interested in ventilation management. Yeah, that's amazing. And so I know now, um, a little more relevant to my pass as a paramedic, I know there is another side of this product called True Monitor. You that's mentioned right. that that's actually the name of the app when you go to download it. Yep. And within True Monitor, we can do the same thing, only instead of a ventilator screen here, I get a patient monitor and I can see the vital signs and you can create a presentation and I can respond to that. I can diagnose the rhythms. I can say what I would do next. I know you can put up chest x-rays and right. things for me and lab yep. values. Yep. So I see that. Could that not be used as a standalone thing to give like a paramedic student, mm -hmm. um, like an ACLS review, but could we not also use that to enhance the fidelity of our ventilation management scenario? Right, yes. <laughs> 
So, so, it's, so it's, an, it's a powerful companion tool. So, so that's an exciting thing. So um, just with a simple Android device or, or iOS device, Absolutely. you have a powerful ventilation management solution. So we will now move on. Um, we're talking about uh, just these remote yeah. uh, solutions in general. So, so Dave, like these remote learning solutions are fantastic. They are a way to embrace the solid educational design and pedagogical principles we've all worked with up until now, but in a virtual environment at this moment, which is a little bit different. The next concern I see is how do we manage all this activity and data? These mm -hmm. individual remote learning solutions take a single event a day in the lab with 40 or 50 students and break it up into 40 or 50 unique events in different locations at different times. How do we keep track of and schedule and measure our progress? Yeah, Bruce, well, this is really where we're going to wrap up. And this is where, where we started in Sim Capture when we created those checklists. The Cap Sim Capture's enterprise solutions really meet all these needs because they help you uh, automate and report and track right. and evaluate um, every outcome and every activity in your simulation center, including these remote-based ones, mm -hmm. which are so pertinent to us all now. Mm -hmm. So we are pretty much out of time. I can't believe it. That was fast. And we, we thank you for letting us in your homes or offices, into your mobile devices, your computer screens, wherever you're watching us from. Thank you very much. Enjoy IMSH 2021. Bruce. I'm hoping we get to see everyone in person. We hope to see year. everybody in person for IMSH 2022. Until then, take care and stay safe. Thanks very much.